there's a quote in a letter by Herman Melville, and he said, I love men who dive, and unless you dove and risked breaking your head on the shoals, then you really weren't an artist at all. That has been my purpose always, to go for the deeper things. In putting this exhibition together with, with Jonathan Weinberg, I would have to just say that this is really a labor of love because we've spent so many years looking over Mauricio's shoulder, learning from him and just like seeing his whole process. He found in the field of picture books and illustration in general, a whole field that he could do figurative art and get certain kinds of messages under the radar. And he had this faith that if he immersed himself in the art of the past, it would feed him and new ideas would come to him. The stuff in my house is, is collectibles that are related to the work. Everything is related to the work. The books are related to the work. The pictures on the wall are related to the work. Favorite artists whom I've been stealing from since I was a young man. So one of the things that's really interesting to see how Maurice's art changed over time is actually to look at his studios over time. Now in the studio, there are Samuel Palmer pictures, pictures by Winslow Homer and Maxfield Parrish. These are all artists that were really, really important to him. And then if you come to the living room, which is more formal, you see that there's a great painting by Stubbs of a lion. He really used his collection as a tool he would purposely use an artist or a composer that he admired, and it was a really great opportunity for him to dive into that person's work. Take In the Night Kitchen is tremendously inspired by Windsor McKay, who is one of the first comic strip artists. He would pick things, and those were the things that he would learn from. In a book like Higgledy Piggledy Pop, Maurice would look at the etchings of, of an artist, Samuel Palmer, who he was a great admirer of. He was an amazing crosshatcher, taking a pen and using the ink and going over and over again to get lights and dark. But he did it with a kind of subtlety and variation, so he gets that technique, what he would say steals that technique from all kinds of places, like from Rembrandt or Samuel Palmer. In order to indulge yourself, in order to enrich one's work, one can only go to these people for sources of inspiration. I can see all the various artists in it, but happily they've come to a, a blend. This is a satisfactory conclusion to many of the books. He took his inspiration not just from the great art of the past, but also popular art. He particularly was drawn to things from his childhood. Mickey Mouse, from the very beginning, was very important to Maurice's career. The characters in Where the Wild Things Are are kind of based on the same proportions of Mickey Mouse. They have big heads and smaller bodies, and they kind of lumber around a little bit like a toddler. He loved early Disney animation films like Pinocchio and Snow White. Dogs and nature in general are really an important part. Jenny was his first dog, a Sealium Terrier and she appeared in practically every book afterwards. These were things that he was always looking at because he might be inspired by something and then he would keep working on it, write about it in his journal. It could be a sketch in a sketchbook and then he'll go back 30 years later and think, well, this would make a book. He would just rework it and spend the next, you know, two or three years working on this one book. Maurice would insist on the writing should always come first. And that's often why it took him so long for a particular project to come to fruition. Writing is arduous in hell. And so I suppose because it's so difficult, it becomes a more interesting challenge. And then if you write and illustrate your own book, there's a cohesion there. It's coming all out of your hot little head. So it's a much more interesting endeavor. When Maurice would start a project, he often would use almost every single book. It was just simple sets, you know, like the little cake paint or with moist paint. It was nothing fancy. One of the things that is amazing about Maurice's technique is these incredibly beautiful dark colors he did with poster paint, paint that I used to use in kindergarten. 
each image for a final piece of art, there'll be four other drawings before that. There'll be trace scenes and sketches, and it will be worked out till it's just perfect for him. He was always trying to do something different, to reinvigorate his work, and that's the way he would do it often, is that he would become obsessed with a different artist, or writer, or composer, and learn everything about that artist, and that would be a way to sort of recharge his batteries. It could be 10, 20 years of research put into doing a book, and it looks so easy and so simple, but it has so much behind it. While things are happening, the art of Maurice Sendak. Thank you.